This is my Kindle e-reader, um, and I absolutely love it. I am a big fan of reading in this format, particularly when I travel. But you know what this channel is about. So today, let's do some stuff with this that it really shouldn't be capable of doing. So I've had this for years. It is looking a bit worn, a bit tired. Um, and yeah, I really have no faults for it. I'm not particularly happy about the whole walled garden thing that Amazon has and the, the controversies that they've had over the years around their ebooks and all that sort of stuff. Not a fan of that. Uh, so today we're going to break free. We are going to jailbreak this Kindle and then we're going to see what we can do with this because fundamentally, under the interface, it's a Linux computer. And you know I do love a good Linux computer, particularly in interesting form factors. So let's see if we can get a full Linux distribution running on this. Uh, and let's see what other jailbroken apps are available here. Let's get into it. So here it is in all its glory. I do believe this is the 10th gen Kindle. Uh, it's definitely looking a bit worse for wear. It's quite worn around the edges, especially on the back as well. I do just literally throw this into my bag whenever I'm traveling. And it's great for, well, reading particularly. But there are lots of limitations with the Kindle system, namely, of course, the fact that you can't use all different types of e-reading formats and you have to use Amazon services to actually get anything on here, do anything with it. So let's change that and let's see what we can do. Now there is a website called Kindle Modding which has everything you need to jailbreak your Kindle depending on which Kindle you have and which OS version you have is going to depend on what jailbreaking you can actually use. I know that the very latest version of the Kindle operating system isn't jailbroken yet. This is actually by habit actually still running an older version just because I don't really connect to Wi-Fi unless I have to, to save battery. So this is running an older version, which means we can still jailbreak it. But if you had one that has recently been updated, you may have to wait. I know that the people behind this wiki and uh, the Discord that there is as well. I know that they're working on a new jailbreak, so I can't imagine it'll be long. It might already be out. Make sure you go check that out. So we're going to follow the steps on the website. And then, uh, yeah, let's see how this goes and go from there, really. Nothing much more to say. Let's get it done. Okay, so following the guide on the website, uh, we're just rebooting our Kindle. Like I said, it was already in airplane mode anyway. Uh, and then we've got these files here that we need to co copy across to the Kindle. All right, so we are all booted up. Let's plug it in and allow it to connect. It's in USB drive mode and it comes up here. So here we go. We can then just extract that as a seven. And we're going to just copy all of these files onto the machine, replacing any that it tells us to. So we're now going to inject the Kindle and there we go and then here it says open the Kindle store on your Kindle by clicking the cart icon on the screen. When prompted click yes to turn off airplane mode and you can see that it's loading in the hack and then it says click on the winter break icon when it loads. It says jailbreaking, please wait. Oh, and it's doing hackery things. <laughs> there we go. It says finished installing jailbreak, please install hotfix now. So now we have to go through and set up the hotfix. Now we need to plug our Kindle back in to the computer and copy over the file. We have this and we have this bin file that we're going to copy over to there. Once again, eject it and then we are going to turn on Wi-Fi um, airplane mode again. And then we're going to go into a settings and we're going to click on the three dots and we're going to say update your Kindle. Doing more Linuxy things. Uh, 
and we're back to the home screen and we have this run hotfix which we can then run and it does some more fun things <laughs> Okay, that's now done. So now we can install the application loader and the package installer to us allow us to install Homebrew stuff on here. So let's do that next. Plug back in and we're going to copy over the extensions and MR package folders from the next download. Like so. Yeah, we've got the bin file. So we're going to put that in the Mr. Package. MR packages, Mr. Packages. Don't know, but there we go. We're gonna do that, and then we're gonna inject Kindle, and then we need to type in semicolon log space mrpi. Hit enter. And it's doing things. Future Zachary here, just stopping in to say we are a very, very small channel. Every single subscription really does help. We are well on our way to 3,000 subscribers. So please, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please do consider becoming a member. Thank you very much. On with the video. And it's again done restarting the UI. And there we go, that is now loaded on here as well. So finally, we just need to disable the over the air updates. Otherwise, every time we get an update, we may break the jailbreak, or at the very least, we have to run the hotfix again. It's just easier to disable it until we hit a point where we need to upgrade the operating system. So let's do that next. All right, so next up, disabling the over-the-air updates does depend on the current firmware version. So we've gone in and checked what that is, uh, but let's go through. So we can say, if it's above 5.11, we need to do some stuff, uh, which unfortunately ours is, it's 5.17. So we're gonna download this extension, plug your Kindle into your PC, wait for your computer to recognize the device, and zip and copy the rename OTA bin folder to the extensions folder in your Kindle. So we've got that. Come over here, we've got extensions. So we're gonna copy that into there like so. And safely eject the computer, Kindle from the computer. open the application loader and then we can select rename OTA binaries select rename it's doing stuff it will reboot all back on so we should actually now be able to can now safely turn off airplane mode and re-enable Wi-Fi so we can do that job done and we can now also then re-enable access to the Kindle store. Personally, I don't really actually need that. There's nothing that I need to get from the Kindle store now. So we're going to skip that step and uh, go straight into installing the KO Reader, which is a additional ebook reader that supports all sorts of formats, which basically means you can read what you want on your Kindle instead of having to rely on the UI and library system that the Kindle currently uses. So let's do that. So we can take a look here and it kind of tells you to check what firmware version you're using. We already know that, so we can go to the next step. And um, we can choose to, uh, we can download our version from here. 
So we can use this bottom one here, Kindle HF, any Kindle device running firmware that is greater than 5.16. So we can come here to the release page and we can find the version that we want. So next up, we can copy uh, plug in again. Then we just need to extract that. And then we've got KO Reader and extensions. So we need to copy those two folders over. And we do that, that. And we'll merge the extensions folder because I'm guessing the extension adds in another extension. Look at that. Who would have thunk it? And then we have, if we go into our application loader, we now have KO Reader here. And uh, we can kind of basically, there's a different couple of different ways that we can run this. So we can either just use start KO Reader, which is the designed way to run it, just how you're supposed to run it. We can use no framework, which kills the Kindle UI to allocate more resources to it. Um, or ASAP, which skips a couple of checks and starts KO Reader as soon as possible. So we'll go with a normal one and load that up. And here we go. It's loaded up and we've got this kind of quick start guys that gives us information on the user interface, shows you all the different things that you can do, kind of very similar to the UI controls that you get on the normal Kindle interface. By the looks of things, you've got status bar, you've got all sorts going on here. Uh, so yeah, this is this is really cool. And now you can kind of just add in your own documents and files and just transfer them over here like you can see. It's just really easy. And now you have full control. Any document you want to, want, you want to read, you can do it with this. So that's perfect. And actually for a lot of people, that's probably as far as you want to take it. Having said that, that's not what this channel is about. We are not most people. So let's get some other apps installed and let's see what they're like. And uh, I'll get back to you. So it's a few days later, uh, because such is time, uh, but we do now have kind of everything that I could get set up, set up. I will say there was a bit of an issue in that in very recent versions of the Kindle firmware, Kindle OS, uh, they've made a switch from using software floating point to hardware floating point. And essentially what that means is any software that was compiled for the older firmwares won't work on the new firmwares. So what that does mean is that a lot of the stuff that's floating out there uh, for apps and stuff to run on hacked Kindles, unfortunately, they don't work because they haven't been updated to do uh, to use the latest firmware. So we're kind of limited in what I was able to get set up. But importantly, I was able to set up the one thing I actually wanted to be able to do. So, you know, that's good. Uh, so as we already saw, we got the alternative e-reader um, software installed and running, that was fine. But let's have a look at the other bits that I have managed to get installed. So there's essentially two things that I managed to get installed on here. So if we go into our application loader, uh, the main one being this program here called Kterm, which gives you an interactive terminal. Um, so this is just booting into kind of the underlying Linux operating system that is run on these Kindles. It's very stripped down. There isn't a huge amount you can do, but this application acts as a nice interface to interface with a command line. Um, the keyboard works really well. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of this and uh, yeah, I, you know, it works. I'm, I'm happy with that. Now, the reason why I wanted this is to bundle it with the other thing that I've been able to do, which is basically getting a full Linux distribution running on here. The other thing that I wanted to do with this was a little project that I found called Alpine Kindle. And this is basically a collection of scripts to help you get Alpine Linux running on your Kindle. So because this is using a Linux kernel, you can use a little program called Chiroot to change the root directory that the kernel is looking at. And then therefore, you can basically run any Linux distribution you want as long as it's compiled for the right processor. I used to do this all the time with my Android devices. Uh, they use a Linux kernel. You could do that. You could then get access to Linux utilities. So that's the next thing that we did with this. And this, this kind of project makes it super easy to do. You can download one of the pre-configured 
Linux images if you want. Granted, they are six years old now, so I would probably advise to build your own. But you can do that as well. They provide a script to do that. The provided image does include a GUI, and you can kind of actually access like the web and file manager and normal stuff like that. Honestly, it's not the best experience. Um, it kind of doesn't work very well with the e-ink screen because the display manager doesn't know it needs to refresh the screen more often and different things for the e-ink. So yeah, a lot of ghosting, a lot of floating stuff about. Um, I would actually advise against using this and instead focus on the terminal version. So I built an image, it doesn't have a GUI, um, but they do provide a nice little launcher application so you can pop in and you can just drop straight down into a Linux shell. And here we are, we have a full Linux shell. We can kind of see that we are in this root file system, which looks a lot more like a normal Linux root file system. We can do Linuxy things. Uh, I don't know what that's actually also installed in here, but there you go, there's top. So we can see the processors running on our Kindle. Um, and yeah, we can do different bits and pieces. However, the one thing I really wanted to be able to do with this is then actually use SSH to connect to my own server. And just like that, we are connected into my Linux home server, which is sitting over there somewhere. And uh, yeah, you can then obviously manage your home server. We could also drop in and check on the system processes that are running on there, make sure what's going on and all that sort of fun stuff. We can obviously do any management tasks that we need. This is a full e-ink, light, thin, portable Linux terminal. And that is very cool. I I don't know, the nerd in me is just loving this. I think it's a great form factor for it. The keyboard is pretty easy to use. Obviously, it's not the best in the world, but you know, as an on-screen keyboard, I think it works quite well. And overall, yeah, it's just a great little package. If you wanted to be able to monitor things in a low-powered, you know, machine, it's great. I love it. This is such a cool idea, and I've had a lot of fun doing this. Um, so I hope you've had a lot of fun watching it as well, to be fair. I really recommend this as a little project. I think it's very easy now to jailbreak the Kindle and to be able to get access to these sorts of things. I hope that we'll see more applications get recompiled for the uh, hard floating point. But for now, this is what we've got. And uh, I think it's very, very cool. All right, then. So there we have it. I'm going to wrap it up there for today. I think it's really cool that we can kind of repurpose things like Kindle and stuff and uh, make a really cool e-ink kind of Linux shell, basically. I think that's really, really cool. Uh, yeah, okay, and you know, you can still do e-reading as well, so that's good. It means I don't lose my books, but also means I have a Linux terminal in my pocket. Very cool. All right, we're going to wrap it up there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. As always, I've enjoyed putting it together, and I'll see you again for another one very, very soon. Bye for now.